Africa is a place of great diversity. Immense deserts, mountains, tropical forests, and broad savannas. It is home to many cultures and more than a thousand languages. The first art in the world was made in Africa because it was the point of origin of humankind. The continent has a long and complex history of cultural and artistic development. But ironically, it, its art is one of the hardest to understand. During the 19th century, Europeans found these African objects of art very different to what they were used to see in the museums. Europeans thought that the African art was primitive and less developed than the European, because they looked very dissimilar to the proportions of the human body derived from classical Greek sculpture. Colonial powers argued that Africans were undeveloped and needed to be civilized. These attitudes of people from outside Africa changed slowly. Painters such as Pablo Picasso realized that the African form of representation could be used to transform the way in which the human body was represented. In this way, African sculptures revitalized the Western art and influenced the origin of the Cubism. African art includes objects of transcendent beauty and aesthetic sophistication, but they were also created as a representation of the social, political, and cosmological conditions of their communities. I try to place centuries of ongoing African creativity in a historical and cultural context. African art was made to be used in important moments of transition in life, death, birth, and initiation into adulthood. Some African art can be valued in a ritual context, others as entertainment, but a lot of it have a social or ideological significance inside a community. Most sculptures in the African art resemble human beings, Although there are many figures of humans and animals that create a kind of hybrid being, in the African art there is not a very realistic approach to depicting a human being or an animal, but African artists place much importance on proportion and balance. There exists the idea that Western art is created for art's sake, while in Africa, during pre-colonial times, the art was solely functional. But the fact that most of the sculpted artifacts known from Africa were made with some practical use, for ritual or daily use, does not mean that they could not simultaneously be valued for the aesthetic function. African art must be understood through the understanding of the local aesthetic values of each region of the continent, rather than through the imposition of categories of the Western art. The majority of works are dated from the early 19th to mid 20th century, when collecting was at its most active. In the European concept of fine art, some artifacts such as textiles and pottery were dismissed as craft work but this separation didn't happen in Africa. Africa has been organized in expansive empires, kingdoms, cities, states, and autonomous villages. Today, Africa has more than 50 independent countries. Art has served as an important means for African leaders to communicate local histories and their own authority. Articles made for royal use are distinguishable from ordinary objects by the costly materials from which they were made, ivory, gold, or bronze, and by their extensive detail and ornamentation. Some animals, such as elephants, lions, leopards, and buffalo, are often associated with political power. Some materials, such as gold, 
ivory, and beads have been used as media of prestige, indicating the wealth and status of the person. In many African cultures, life expands beyond our current world. It encompasses the deceased ancestors and the not yet born. Ancestors are able to intervene in the world on behalf of their descendants. Their blessings are sought through specific objects associated with the physical remains of the deceased, such as reliquaries. The religious beliefs of cultures such as the Dogon, for example, focus primarily on the spirits of ancestors who are the intermediaries between the living and the forces of the universe. This female figure represents supplication to the ancestors. The posture with the left hand open and the fingers of the right hand closed is often interpreted as a prayer for rain. The transition to adulthood is marked by art objects that accentuate the phases of death and rebirth. Through initiation, a young boy is physically separated from his previous life in the village for some months before re-entering society as a man. One purpose of art made in Africa is to celebrate and honor ancestors which can still communicate with living humans. Art is sometimes used to honor people who have recently died, to help to promote the leadership of the elders, or to bring all the members of a lineage together. Although most of the cultures represented in the exhibitions have changed dramatically since the works were created, the traditional art persists in many regions where they adapt to a more interconnected world. Knowing the cultural characteristics of a community helps spectators interpret and understand the message being conveyed by a particular piece. Textiles are found everywhere in Africa, and this activity is highly developed. They are extremely diverse and assume very distinct political, social, religious, and personal contexts in the different cultures. Natural dye colors, rhythmic motifs, and subtle patterns are frequently combined in elegant harmonies. Textiles are used in rituals to rub the dead and as goods for trade. Wood and cotton are the materials more generally used for the production of textiles in Africa. Masks allow us to hide, but also reveal unseen aspects of our personality. A mask permits to enact different personalities. The function of masks in their art African cultures are as complex and varied as their forms. Masks entertain, initiate youths into adulthood, protect communities from harm and evil forces assist the souls of the deceased in their transition to the world of the ancestors, show political authority, and help to teach social values. The right to own and use some masks is carefully controlled. The elephant mask, for example, is a potent symbol of power. Men use masks are initiation rites of men's societies, at the funerals of important elders, in annual harvest ceremonies. The tradition of the masks permit persists strongly in many regions of Africa, adapting to an ever more interconnected world. 
Some of the most common themes in masquerade are the representation of ancestors, animals, gods, and spirits, which might bring agricultural fertility, or people from outside the society who are often represented in a satirical or rude manner. Because wearing a mask is a disguise, masquerades are very useful for the members of secret society. A secret society is an association of men who group together to act as a type of police force inside a community.